Hello wonderful people, it's Wild here. Today I'll be showing you 40 different flooring designs in a range of different styles that you can use to upgrade your builds. There are timestamps for each of these designs in the description and I'll be going over the materials you'll need and techniques you can use to create these patterns. This first wood design using two different colours of wood to create a parquet pattern. Now I've gone with stripped oak and stripped spruce and you can see I'll be zigzagging back and forth between these two to create my pattern. Just like this. So I find it helpful to start with the centre zigzag like this and then work to either side and then you fill up your floor with this great design. This next design I like to call a tech teal as the pattern that we have in the light grey glaze terracotta here has a really futuristic feel. To create this floor design you'll need light grey glazed terracotta, quartz pillars, chisel quartz blocks, some smooth stone, some andesite and then some prismarine brick stairs. The Glazed terracotta can be a little bit tricky to place, so once you've found the pattern for the first piece, you can then rotate to move the central design in the different angles. And the great thing about a design like this is you can repeat it over to fill in a larger floor area. So I would take the edge of this design as my fold over point and continue on this way, so I could add in one more of the pillars going in that direction then I'll have my pillar facing upwards and then I'll move on to stone and keep repeating this pattern as far as I need to go. For this first bamboo pattern I'm using the regular bamboo, green glazed terracotta, lime terracotta and moss blocks to create this really lush natural looking tile pattern. For this design, I'd start by creating a grid pattern like this, where you place in your lime terracotta spaced three apart with moss, and then I'll go ahead and fill in each of the gaps with these designs. This tatami mat design utilizes looms to create the texture of the mats. I've used some stripped oak logs for the flooring here, however you could use whatever you like. I just like the texture of the floorboards this gives. Now I like to aim to have my tatami mats be about 5 blocks long and then each of your mats is going to be 2 blocks wide. This way you can place the two looms opposite each other like this to create the mat texture. This dark oak lights flooring design is really great to be used in a large space. For example, it would look fantastic in a storage hall. It uses the stripped dark oak logs, dark oak trapdoors, redstone lamps, and of course a power source, and then some brown terracotta. And you could switch out this block in the center here for something else to fit your build if you'd like. Another great thing is you could hide some secret storage underneath these trapdoors, making it even better for a storage room. One fun idea would be to switch out the power source underneath these lights for a skulk sensor, so that way they turn on as you walk. Next up we have our second wood design, and for this I'm using some stripped dark oak logs, some stripped spruce logs, and some stripped oak logs. However, you could use any combination of logs you'd like, you just need three. This geometric design has two sets of diagonal lines with a different slope, making for a really interesting look. To create it, we're going to alternate a pattern between log facing upwards, facing out and to the side, and just repeat this like this. You'll then switch over to your next log type, and in this case I've got spruce, and continue on the pattern. I like to start by lining up my diagonal upwards block like this and then I can continue the pattern on from there. Onto our next block. And our floor is filled in. This next design uses blast furnaces and deep slate to create a tile pattern. You can see I've created 2x2 two two blocks of the blast furnaces and the deep slate just in alternating rows like this. Now keep in mind when you're creating this that you're facing the same way when you place in all your blast furnaces because depending on the way you face you'll get a different texture. Now of course you could use this to your advantage and create an alternating design like this but make sure you use the same pattern throughout the whole flooring for a really nice finish. 
These piston tiles have a really unique texture and I've paired the pistons with some stripped oak logs as they have a similar tone to the wood on the piston. To create this design, I start by placing my central piston like this and then I face the pistons so that the wood part is facing towards the central design. Then for these little wood sections in between your piston rows, I've placed them so they're alternating in directions like this to create a parquet-like texture. For this aged stone flooring, I'm using andesite, andesite stairs, cobblestone, cobblestone stairs, cracked stone bricks and some stone brick stairs. Now the way I like to go about creating this design is creating an outline like this using my stairs and I'm just creating a winding texture. It's up to you how you go about this but you can see I've just created some lines. I'll then go and fill in with another block like this and then I'm going to start creating texture by switching out some of these blocks for some of my other materials. Now you can always go and add this texture in as you create your design. However, I prefer to do it afterwards like this. It just gives you a little bit more freedom when creating your shapes and your customized textures. For wood design number three, you'll need spruce logs and oak logs. To create this design, I'll start by placing in a grid of spruce logs spaced one apart like this. Then I'll go ahead and fill in the corner gaps between these with oak logs, creating a kind of tiled pattern. Then I'll fill in these gaps using some more oak logs, this time placed on the side and you can see I'm placing them so it's as if the texture of the log is going in towards the upright logs. Then I'll rotate and fill in the other gaps. And there we go. This sandstone mosaic has a really grand feel and will look great inside an Egyptian build or desert style castle. You can see I've created a central medallion and then some designs flowing out from here. And to do this, we've used lime terracotta and glazed terracotta and then yellow terracotta and yellow glazed terracotta. In between all of the terracotta though, we've got this textured pattern using sandstone. Now to create this, you'll need to be using some stairs. By placing them upside down, you can get this kind of rough sandstone texture and you can use this to create tiles like this. There we go. Next we have a note block parquet. To create this, I'd start by creating a grid with upright stripped dark oak logs spaced three apart and joined with horizontal logs like that. Then you can go ahead and create your central design by placing in the note blocks and then facing the spruce logs in towards the central note block. Next we have a coral mosaic. This floor would look fantastic in an Atlantis or mermaid style build. Now for my design, I've used a mixture of fire coral, bubble coral and brain coral, but you can use any mixture of the coral blocks. I've also got some coral fans for added texture and then I've used some sandstone slabs as my backing. To create this, you'll need to be placing water underneath your floor like this and I recommend placing in some lights so you don't have glow squids forming under here. Then I can place in my blocks to create this pattern and then fill in the gaps with my slabs. To place in these fans, you'll need to make sure you click on your slabs once they're placed in with a water bucket. This will waterlog the slab and when you place on your coral, it'll keep it in its bright, colorful form. This first mud brick design has a more subtle pattern and muted color and you could use it for an interior space or an exterior space. Each pattern section for this design takes up a 3x4 space. I alternate between creating U shapes like this with a block on the other half with the mud brick and then packed mud on the other side and then I switch over to have the mud brick on the opposite side for the next tile and it creates this kind of geometric chevron like design. Next up we have this kelp tile design which uses mangrove wood alongside the dried kelp block. You can see I've just alternated between the two here. The dried kelp block already has a tile like texture and you can see that if I just place a group of them together it creates an offset tile design that could also be a really great option. But I like to break it up by mixing in some of these mangrove wood blocks and I've gone with mangrove wood here because that means no matter what direction I'm facing when I place it I'll still end up with this bark texture. You will want to keep in mind though that if you face in some directions your bark texture will be facing in a different way so you'll want to keep it consistent throughout the whole floor. 
Next, we have an andesite medallion. This would look fantastic in medieval castle. To create this, choose your center point and place in a chiseled stone brick. Then you can place your polished basalt coming out from that in a radial design and then fill in the corners with some more of the chiseled stone brick. I've then used some stairs to define the edge of this circle-like shape and you can see I've curved in the regular andesite stairs on the corners to enhance the circle-like feel. Then you can extend some polished basalt off in the four directions and fill in the corners with a checkerboard pattern of polished andesite and regular andesite. For this fourth wood design option, I've paired some stripped dark oak logs with some dark oak planks, and you could use any combination of logs and planks here. I've created a basket weave texture by overlapping the dark oak logs in different directions and then filling in the gaps with the dark oak plank. To create this pattern, I like to start by running in rows of my stripped dark oak logs spaced one apart like this, and you'll do this for the full width of your floor. Then you're going to come through and start breaking every other block like this to create the pattern. So let's see, we want the next one to underlap over like this, then we'll break and come through and over like that. There we go, now we need to join up the section so it's going under here so it'll go over this log and under here and over that log and you can see it's created a basket weave. Then we just need to fill in the gaps with our dark oak planks. For this brick and granite design, you can see we've utilized stairs to give the appearance of blocks being offset. So these bricks that you can see here are actually two stairs with their backs facing towards each other, which come together to form the shape of a full block. I've done two groups of two all the way around these two by two squares of granite, and then in the gaps between the stairs, I've placed in a regular granite. For this barrel weave flooring, I've paired the barrels with some spruce planks as they have a similar texture and colour to the wood used in the barrels. To create this, I use my basket weaving technique. I start by lining up all of my barrels in one spaced out rows like this. You want to make sure they're all facing the same direction. And you can see to place these, I'm holding shift and then clicking on the top back corner. Once I've got that, I can start creating my weave. So here I'm going over, then I'm going under, then I'm going over and under. So on this next row, I'm going to do the exact opposite. So we went under here, so I'll break to go over the top. We went over, so now we'll go underneath, under, and over again, over and under, like that. And once again, I'll do the opposite for this row. Go and again, just like that. Then we can fill in the gaps with spruce planks. And you can see that the banding on the barrels really accentuates this pattern. Now I think this design will work really well in a medieval style build and of course it's got tons of storage built in so it would be great inside a survival base. This deep slate and polished basalt flooring has a real deep dark sort of feel to it. To create it, I started by making a grid pattern out of my polished basalt where the uprights are spaced two apart. Then I've joined them up with some horizontal polished basalt. Now for the designs in the 2x2 two two gaps, I created these by placing the cobbled deep slate in the two corners like this and you want to make sure that you're on the two same corners for every square that you fill in. Then you'll place in some stairs so that the back part of the stair is against one of your cobbled deep slate and you want to be placing them against the same cobbled deep slate each time so it creates this larger and smaller square effect which is the really fantastic feature of this um, pattern. This next flooring option uses mud alongside jungle wood to create a really geometric pattern. Let's have a look at how to create it. To create this pattern, I like to work in rows. So for this first row, I'm going to start by creating a little L shape out of my jungle planks and I'll fill in this gap with the packed mud. Then I'll create an L shape in the opposite direction out of the mud and alternate between these two until I finish the row. And you can see I'd continue off this way if I was going to make my floor any larger. 
Then for the next row, I'm going to switch and alternate to the next pattern. So here we've got our starting block as our packed mud, and then I'll switch to my jungle planks and keep alternating between these two. You can check you've created your pattern right as you should end up with diagonal lines like this out of your two blocks. I like to call this next option an andesite stripe. To create it, you're going to place stripes of polished and regular andesite two blocks apart. Then in the gaps, we're going to be using some stone stairs and stone blocks. To do this, I've created a tile pattern going back and forth with my stone blocks. And then we're going to fill in the rest of the gaps with the stone stairs. I'm going to be placing it so that the lowered part of the stair is facing towards the center of the pattern each time. And you can see that they should be kind of joined on a diagonal like that. For this fifth wood style, I'm just using one kind of log and here I've gone with oak. However, you could use any log or a mixture of logs. To create this chevron-like wood plank pattern, I'm going to be placing in groups of three, alternating back and forth like this between my logs. And then I'll just continue filling in until I've reached the edge of my flooring and you can see the pieces will get shorter and shorter as you get to the corner. Now I like to start by creating my first central chevron going down the middle of my build. Then I'll come to either side and continue the pattern. So here we've gone three and then out, three and then out, three and then out on the other way. Once you've reached three blocks out, you can start going off again in another chevron pattern like this and the same thing on the other side of the build. This next flooring pattern is a cyan mosaic and you can switch out the colors here and the wood to create a totally different feel. For this pattern, I've used oxidized cut copper and oxidized copper alongside some warped planks and stripped warp stems. And then for my really texture block, I've got my cyan glazed terracotta. For this pattern, I've got five by five panels, which I've then joined along the sides. To create each panel, I'm placing my cut copper in the corners like this. Then coming in on a diagonal from this, I'm placing in my cut copper blocks like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and place in a warped stem in the center with some warp planks surrounding that. And to fill in these gaps, we're going to be placing a cyan glazed terracotta so that the top of the creeper is facing it towards the copper block. And then I'll fill in the gaps in between these with some stripped warp stems on the side. So you can see that the patterns run into one another. So the edge of this pattern is the start of the next square and so forth going all the way around to complete the floor. This honeycomb flooring has a really fun and bright design and you could use it alongside a bee house. To build this flooring, we're going to create rows of honeycomb blocks like this, where I'm following a chevron shape. And then I'll go ahead and use my beehives to create the next row in the pattern. Then I'll go in with some more honeycomb blocks following the outline and some more beehives. Once we've got our honeycomb blocks in, we can grab our yellow glazed terracotta. Now I like to start by doing all the ones that are on this kind of shaped bend first and I'm facing them so they're pointing this way. So I'll skip there and here and here like that. Then I'm going to rotate and do all the ones on this join here so that they're facing the other direction like that. And to be left with a beautiful, colorful flooring. Oh, I've just got to fill in one more here. Now you can add in these glazed terracottas as you go, but I just find it easier to start by placing in the honeycomb blocks and then go in with the terracotta afterwards. This modern tile has a more sleek feel. We've got some gray glazed terracotta, smooth stone, gray concrete powder, and then cyan terracotta, which has a gray hue. To start this design, I'm gonna to come to the center of my flooring and place in a little plus like this. Then I'll go two off to either side using my smooth stone, and then I'll fill in the corners with some more smooth stone. Then I'm just creating a two by two block box out of my gray concrete powder and filling in with my gray glazed terracotta. Now there's a, diff a few different options for placing in these terracotta depending on what direction you face when you place in your first terracotta. But whatever you do, you want to make sure you're repeating the same pattern in each of your squares like this. Now if I was to continue on this pattern, let's build off to the side here. 
I'm going to continue as if I've got this first square. So I've got to create my little cross using the end of that pattern as the start of my next. I'll go two off to either side like this and I filled in my corners. Then you could imagine that we could extend off to those sides. So I'll fill in here and continue my way around like this. And I need to place in one more here and here with that going in there. Then I'm going to go in with my grey concrete powder and create my 2x2 two two gaps. And I can fill in any gaps as I go with my stone. And then I just need to go in with my glazed terracotta to create my pattern. And there you go, you can see we've extended the tile. This next flooring option is a chisel bookshelf parquet. You can see to create it, I've used the chisel bookshelves alongside stripped oak logs and oak planks. I've kind of created a checkerboard pattern here. Every other group of three has this design with the four stripped logs facing upwards in the corners, the four facing to the side around the edges, and then a chisel bookshelf in the center. And then I've alternated that between a design where I've just got a chisel bookshelf surrounded by oak planks. And it kind of echoes the design that we've got going on in the chisel bookshelf itself. You can then repeat these tiles as many times as you want to fill up the floor. For this bone tile design, I've only used one block, the bone block, but you can see it's created a really geometric pattern. As well as the checkerboard created between the two designs, we have this circular kind of form going on with the top of the bone blocks. And then in the other spaces, I've created this almost basket weave effect. And to do this, I simply place the two diagonals going in one direction and then in the other direction I filled in the other part of the square and doesn't look fantastic. This purple medallion design has a really cool nether like feel and actually melds the nether, the overworld and the end. For our blocks you'll need cherry logs which have a similar tone, nether bricks, some chiseled nether brick, nether brick stairs. You'll also need purple pillars, purple blocks, and purple stairs. So to create this medallion, I started by placing my chiseled nether brick in the center for the central pattern. Then I've put some purple blocks in the four corners, as well as some purple stairs to fill in the gap. Now to give it this really circular appearance, I'm using another stair with its back faced against the other stair here. And this forms the appearance of a solid block and your eye just follows around the raised sections of this design. I've then created separation between the four kind of corners of this design using these cherry logs. And then I've created a simple tile in these corners using some nether brick, nether brick stairs and a purple pillar for a little bit of extra interest. Now the great thing about this design is you could extend it by extending out these dividers and repeating this tile over and over to fill in the corners. Or you could go ahead and repeat the whole square by folding it over like this. So here we've got this first stair of the medallion. So I'd place my next one in here like this and I can go ahead and repeat this way like this. And you can see I'm going to be able to create a whole another design just following along this way. And I could continue repeating on to repeat this next square. So to extend out this way I'd be going in with my cherry logs like this. And you can see how it would easily repeat. But it is up to you to choose what works best for your space and you could even play around by using these blocks to create some more designs to fill in a larger area. For this next bamboo design, I'm mixing the stripped bamboo blocks with some hay bales, which have this similar texture. We've also got some bamboo trapdoors coming in here, as well as some ochre frog lights to illuminate the floor. Let's see how to create it. To create this, I'll start by making my first grid, which will be spaced three apart like this. One, two, three, and put in my next grid piece. I'll then do the other half of this grid going across this way. And you can see if you were to extend this floor, you'd just continue counting at three and putting in your stripes. Now for all the joins on this part of the flooring, I'll place in a stripped bamboo log facing upwards like this. Now we're going to go in and create the next design. So I'll fill in the stripes in between all of these ones. And in the opposite direction as well. Now 
that we've got these in, you're going to go to all of the joins that are in between these ones that we've just created. So here, 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 and here. And underneath that, we're going to place in an ochre frog light and a bamboo trap door on top. So you can see it looks as if this weave is underneath this other weave. Then in between all of these gaps I'll fill in with hay bales and this will really make the design pop. Alright now if we look it's even more obvious. You can see we've got this group of three here with those bands going across. Then we've got this other separated group of three going across with the bamboo lights. This third bamboo flooring just uses bamboo blocks and then moss blocks but utilizes the different textures to create the design. To create my pattern I'm going to start by coming one over and then creating a chevron pattern by alternating it back and forth between my directional bamboo. And I'll just do this going one block apart each time till I fill in my floor like this and then I'll finish off with one more block. You'll then notice you have a whole bunch of gaps to fill in and this is where the moss block is going to come in. We're going to alternate between moss block and then upright bamboo to create the texture. When I missed one extra bamboo coming up this way and I'll come back down again and I'm going to start again with my moss block and work my way up. And there we go, the texture is complete. For this fourth bamboo design, we'll be using the stripped bamboo with its yellow hue as well as some bamboo mosaic. I'm just creating a tile pattern here by placing a 2x2 square of the tiled mosaic followed by a 2x2 square of the stripped bamboo facing upwards and alternating it across the floor. For this cherry and quartz design, we'll be using cherry trapdoors and placing some stripped crimson stems underneath them so that the colour comes through in the gaps of the trapdoor. We've also got some stripped cherry logs, some quartz pillars and then some chisel quartz blocks. Each kind of tile in this design takes up a 5x5 five five space, so I start by creating a grid of chisel quartz blocks spaced to three apart and then joining them up by alternating between my quartz pillar and then my crimson stem. Then in between each of these gaps I create a 3x3 three three design like this with a quartz pillar in the center and then my cherry blocks around the outside. And you can put any block you'd like underneath these trapdoors but I like to add in the crimson stem, it just adds a pop of depth. You could also hide some lighting under there if you'd like. For this cherry wood design number one, I'm just using cherry logs and some stripped cherry logs and I'm creating a diagonal chevron pattern going up like this alternating between the two logs as we go and it creates this diagonal stripe with texture in between. For this second cherry base design we're playing off the pink colour of the cherry planks and mixing in some jungle planks and mangrove planks to create a really high contrast floor pattern. To create this pattern I'm going to start by creating little L's like this out of my wood types and I'll be following a pattern switching between the three as I go. You can see I'm kind of working in a diagonal angle here and working my way all the way up to the top. Then I'll come back down and start my pattern again. So the next block in our pattern would go like this, but since I've reached the edge of the floor, I'll remove these two and then continue on. So next we've got jungle, then mangrove, cherry, jungle, mangrove, and we'll finish off with some cherry. And you can see how this would continue on if we had a bigger floor. This copper medallion has a really grand feeling and would work great inside a castle or temple. To create it, I've started by creating my central design where I've used a mixture of acacia logs, some waxed copper blocks, as well as some red sandstone. You can see I've then come out to my next layer of the design to create a circle using some cut copper stairs, as well as some acacia logs facing upwards. And then we come out another layer to complete the circle using some stripped acacia logs and some more copper. You can then see I'm going to extend off to my full size by running a row of acacia logs with stairs to either side. Now to fill in the corner gaps here, I'm going to be using a textured pattern of red sandstone and red sandstone stairs, which I'm placing upside down to create this rough sandstone texture. And you can see it has a really effective look. 
For this next flooring option, we have our rooted light design. And it's called that because not only do we have the illumination for the redstone lamps, but we have these mangrove roots playing into the texture here. You'll also need some dark oak planks, which we're placing beneath the mangrove roots to conceal the gaps in between the texture. Then we've got some dark oak logs as well as some strip spruce logs and you'll need a power source for your redstone lamps. Now you can see this has a tile like design so each tile we start by placing our dark oak logs in each corner facing upwards as well as in the center of this square. Then to join the edges I've placed in my mangrove roots with dark oak planks underneath and then my redstone lamps power sourced underneath that and then in to fill in this gap I've just used some of these stripped spruce logs creating a circle around the central log. Then this design just repeats to fill in the whole floor. Now of course you could switch out the lever that I've used underneath my redstone lights for some skulk sensors so your lining turns on as you enter your room. This simple but stylish diorite tile uses alternating rows between the polished diorite, regular diorite, then we've got polished diorite and birch wood. Polished diorite, regular diorite, polished diorite, birch wood. And I followed the same pattern throughout the whole floor. The easiest way I find to build this is to create a grid pattern out of the polished diorite to begin with and then go in with my diorite and birch in alternating strips filling in the gaps. Next up we have a grayscale tile which uses gravel, stone and andesite. So this pattern uses the subtle difference in the saturation as well as the texture to create the design. And to do this we're going to start with our stone and andesite. I'm going to come to this stone here and count two blocks over and place in a little L shape like this. Then I'll create another L shape out of my andesite coming down in the diagonal. And I'll just repeat this all the way down. Now, of course, if you're starting this design out, start by placing in your first row and then repeat this pattern as we go. So once again, I'll count two blocks over from my stone and place in my stone. And you can imagine that it would continue on like this if we were to continue our floor. Then I'll go in with my andesite and alternate again back and forth until I fill in the floor. Count two blocks over. So the first design would go here. And then I'll place in my andesite, which would go here, but I can remove the extra blocks. And in fact, I placed in gravel there, so I'll switch it back over to the andesite. Then we're left with this, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all the gaps with the gravel. So we've got these little kind of uh, S shapes here that we'll be filling in, as well as all of the one block gaps in between of our design. And then here's our flooring. You could use this in an interior space as well as an exterior space. Here we have a mushroom mosaic and I think this would look really pretty inside a mushroom castle or inside a Mario or Princess Peach style build. To create this I'm starting by making a grid pattern using my mushroom stems with a quartz pillar in the center of each through eye gap. Then in the corners of the grid I've got a cherry trapdoor with a mushroom block underneath so that way that the red shows through the gaps in the trapdoor. Then in each of these 3x3 sections I've placed a red mushroom block in the center with stripped cherry logs coming out to either side and then the corners are just filled in with red wool. And when it all comes together it looks fantastic. So now you have 40 designs to utilize in your build and you can pick and choose and switch out the blocks to create an infinite number of styles. Be sure to leave a comment with your favorite design and if you enjoyed today's video I'd really appreciate if you consider liking and subscribing and check out my Patreon to access exclusive benefits. I'll see you in another video.